The city streets are crowded for the holiday. Even with the rain, hidden in the chaos is the element waiting to strike like snakes. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my top 10 WTF questions from the Batman movie. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the movie at least once or twice by now. There were a lot of huge things that we have to talk about. There are some follow up questions. We are doing an IMAX ticket giveaway so you can go back and watch a bunch more times. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and post your biggest question after the movie in the comments. Careful for spoilers. If you have not seen the movie yet, we'll be talking about everything that happened. Starting with number 10. What did Barry Keoghan's version of the Joker do that was so bad that it got him thrown in Arkham Asylum by Batman instead of the regular prison for common criminals? And has he been through a version of the accident that turned him into the Joker? Even though they explained during this movie, he's not calling himself the Joker. Like he hasn't fully become the Joker yet. I've already talked about the deleted scene that he had with Batman. Like they did a version of a Batman versus Joker scene in Arkham when Batman came back to interrogate Riddler before the big final attack on the election. They have a brief interchange. Like he's trying to provoke Batman and Batman doesn't want to have anything to do with him. Like he's just trying to focus on what's happening with Riddler and what's been happening for the past week or so. This is long before he develops the Joker toxin. This is long before he starts wearing the makeup. You have to remember that Arkham isn't just a prison for really dangerous criminals. It's a prison for the really dangerous villains who are mentally insane. So if you think about Heath Ledger's Joker, this is a really good example. Like he pulls off that really badass heist at the beginning of the Dark Knight movie. He killed a bunch of people. He was using a lot of clown paraphernalia, all those clown masks. The way I imagine it is that Barry Keoghan's character tried to pull off a heist that was smaller than that and was not using a lot of clown paraphernalia. And maybe only a couple people died or almost died. Like it wasn't as big a disaster as what was happening during the Dark Knight with that version of the Heath Ledger Joker. I think a lot of his conversation with the Riddler trying to console him after Batman rained on his parade, so to speak, was also a little autobiographical. Like he was also speaking from experience, like Batman rained on his parade, the Joker's parade. And for a little while, he felt like the city actually feared him, but then they kind of viewed him as a clown. But he was telling the Riddler there are worse things than being, and he kind of trails off. He was going to say there are worse things than being a clown. So he wasn't just telling the Riddler to not worry about feeling like a clown. He was also sort of talking to himself in that way too. Like it wouldn't be so bad to be a clown. And then eventually he will become the full clown version of the Joker wearing the makeup and the full on getup. He'll embrace that. Next one, what is the Riddler's Rata Alada website counting down to? So it's a real website. If you didn't know, you can actually go visit it, rataalada.com. And it's actually counting down to something that started just a couple days ago. My early theory is that they would just release some extra content or there'd be some deleted scenes, maybe the Joker deleted scene. So just keep that in the back of your mind. It is counting down to something, some sort of content that they'll release through that viral website. But number eight, which other Batman villains are currently in Arkham Asylum right now? Assuming pretty much all of them are still getting versions of their origin stories too at this point in the timeline. And which of those characters are we going to see during the Batman Arkham HBO series? Probably Mr. Freeze because Matt Reeves has already talked about him. Maybe Scarecrow. He'd still be a doctor working at Arkham, probably experimenting on patients, developing his fear toxin. And also probably Harley Quinn. She'd still be Dr. Harleen Quinzel at this point in the timeline too. Number seven, follow up too. Matt Reeves said that he would love to introduce a new version of Harley Quinn in this universe and do an origin story for her. Who would that be? It definitely wouldn't be Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Given that all the spinoffs, the HBO series, the sequels are going to be in the same tone of this very noir Batman universe, the world's greatest detective Batman universe, I think this version of Harley Quinn would be a little less over the top than Margot Robbie's version of the character, just like a little bit more subtle. Imagine a slightly more realistic version of Batman the Animated Series done in live action. But he did say that most of these other big Batman villains would be featured during the Arkham series. Number six, there were so many scenes of Batman saving children in the movie, particularly the mayor's son, a couple times in the film. And scenes of that Skull Gang member played by the Tim Drake actor from Titans, Catwoman going to Bloodhaven where Dick Grayson is from. Will they ever introduce one of the Robins during the Robert Pattinson era of Batman? Even if it's not till he's much older later in his timeline. They kind of did that with the Christian Bale Dark Knight trilogy. If you haven't seen the Dark Knight Rises in a while, Joseph Gordon-Levitt played a character called John Blake, who as a child had an encounter with Batman one night. It inspires him to eventually become a police officer one day, and he later works with Batman during Dark Knight Rises to take down Bane. At the end of the movie, Batman leaves him the mantle of the bat, the bat cave, all of his Batman gear in his will, and it's revealed that his legal name was actually Robin. So it's very on the nose. He's not Dick Grayson, but he's a version of Dick Grayson. 
You have to remember that right now in this first movie, he's in his late 20s. I believe canonically, Batman adopted Dick Grayson and he became Robin during his third year as Batman. This movie is Batman year two. And I don't think that Matt Reeves is ready to have Robert Pattinson's Batman adopt a child in the next Batman movie. So if we do see a Robin, I'm assuming that they'll use the same Christopher Nolan tactic where you won't really hear about a Robin character taking up the mantle of the bat till the final film. Number five, how did the Penguin get all of his scars? We knew during this movie, he was Carmine Falcone's right-hand man. He'd been working with him for a long time. The way they explain the Penguin name in this universe is that it's used as more of a derogatory term at his character. After that amazing Batmobile car chase scene where they capture him and then question him, they tie him up, but then they just take off and leave him without untying him. He kind of waddles out a little bit like a penguin. His story inside this universe is going to be a little bit like the Scarface movie. He'll be like the Tony Montana of this Batman universe. My assumption just based on the scars on his face is that he just got into a really bad fight when he was younger and that's what disfigured him. Post all your Heath Ledger Joker memes. Do you want to know how I got these scars? Number four, if Robert Pattinson's Batman did not go to Nanda Parbat to train with Ra's al Ghul in the League of Assassins before becoming Batman, Alfred said in the movie he was the person who trained Batman how to fight if that wasn't clear. That's where he learned all of his techniques. Does a version of the League exist in this universe? Is there a version of Ra's al Ghul that they'll use at some point between the sequels and the HBO series? I understand why Matt Reeves wanted to swerve on Ra's al Ghul and that part of the origin story during this universe. He didn't want to remake Batman Begins. That was a great movie. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't do League of Assassins or Ra's al Ghul in one of these HBO spinoff series. Number three, if the Batman movie takes place on Earth 2, separate from the main DCEU, Justice League Connected movies, will they reference Robert Pattinson Batman during the Flash movie, when the Flash travels the multiverse to get to the Earth that Michael Keaton's Batman comes from? During the big Comic-Con presentation they did for the Flash movie at DC Fandom a couple years ago, they actually did this big montage of all the different DC movies with all the different actors going back 30 plus years. So it's like they're trying to use the Flash movie to canonize everything through the multiverse, the same way that Spider-Man No Way Home canonized Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, the Venom movie. Same idea, but with all the DC movies. Matt Reeves said that he had no plan to introduce a version of Superman or any metahumans, any superpowered individuals inside his Batman universe. So he doesn't have plans to reference the multiverse from the Batman stuff, but that doesn't mean the other DC films won't ever reference Robert Pattinson's Batman. So for those of you asking which Batman is supposed to be the main Batman in the movies right now, if you're talking about crossover Batman, like who's the Batman that's going to be showing up in all the big Justice League films that they do in the future, right now at least it's supposed to be Michael Keaton's Batman. But just behind the scenes at Warner Brothers, they are viewing Robert Pattinson as the true future of Batman at DC. Like when you think about who their most important Batman is to them, it is supposed to be Robert Pattinson's Batman. It's just that they also need a crossover Batman to show up during these big films because they want to do future Justice League team ups and you can't do a Justice League movie without a version of Batman. So Michael Keaton is more like the older, wiser Batman Beyond version of Bruce Wayne. Still hoping for a Batman Beyond live action movie with a version of Terry McGinnis. Number two, which other big Batman villains or characters will get their own HBO series? So easy pick is probably Catwoman. Pretty much all the major characters that they've already introduced. Probably the Court of Owls eventually. Matt Reeves said that he would also love to do a version of the Hush character, even though there were a lot of Batman Hush references in the movie that I talked about in my breakdown videos. The reporter character that was killed by Carmine Falcone for Thomas Wayne was not the actual Thomas Elliot Hush character. There were just a lot of references to the Hush storyline, but not the actual Hush character, so he's still free to show up in future films. Like I said, pretty much every Batman villain is solid enough to get their own HBO series with the right creative force behind it. Like James Gunn could even make a badass version of a Condiment King HBO series. Just look at what he did with Peacemaker. Like nobody cared about that character after the Suicide Squad movie. Then after the Peacemaker series, people are like, holy crap, this was amazing. Because they already have two HBO series in development right now, they'll probably wait till after the Batman sequel movie in like three or four years to plan more HBO series. Because like Mr. Freeze, for instance, and Court of Owls, both would make amazing HBO series, especially the Court of Owls, but they can't really do those until they introduce them for the first time in the universe, officially introduce them. All the actors have been hyping up Court of Owls so much in the past week. It just feels like they have big plans for them at some point in the future. Thomas and Martha were leaders of the Court of Owls in this timeline. I like that one. Oh, that's a... Hmm. I was definitely kind of thinking Court of Owls is probably going to be a, in the sequel. Oh, it definitely seems don't like... Don't say it! 
<laughs> Mommy, I'm literally just guessing. I just no. keep saying it. <laughs> Good thing it's not in this film. <laughs> or is it? Or is it? So number one, WTF, what is going on with the actual Court of Owls in this universe? And will they actually be the final boss of this Batman trilogy? Or will that be the Joker? My personal preference is I would rather see Matt Reeves try to use different villains than have been done before as the final bosses of the movies. Yes, I do want to see this Batman versus this new Joker, but we've seen Batman versus so many different Jokers so many times in the past 10 years. There are so many versions of the Joker right now, and I'm sure Barry Keoghan's going to be amazing as this version of the Joker, but there are so many amazing Batman villains that they've never done in the live action movies. The Court of Owls are just one of the easiest slam dunks. In order to be a good final boss for a trilogy, the villain has to be smarter, more insidious, more powerful, more fearsome than all the Batman villains who have come before. They have to be a huge upgrade threat, and because it's the last movie in a trilogy, their storyline has to be connected deeply to Batman's history and bring his story full circle. The Court of Owls does that. Their storyline reveals a true dark history of Gotham, more dark truths about Batman's parents and his family going way back generations that he never knew. Their storyline shakes his reality in a really fundamental way, like my life as I knew it has kind of been a lie. The Riddler teased a little bit of that with the dark history of the Wayne and the Arkham families when he was trying to out Thomas Wayne. But Court of Owls is like a much bigger, more profound version of that for the entire history of the Wayne family and the Arkham families in Gotham. If you have any big questions about the movie or what's happening with the sequels, the HBO series that I didn't address in this video, just write them below in the comments. I will do a bunch more bonus videos this week. I'm just waiting a couple more days because some of it's really spoilery and I think people are still trying to see the movie. Everyone click here for my full breakdown of the Batman movie with all the Easter eggs from the entire film and click here for my video about that Joker scene and the ending and the post credit scene. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.